budget-oriented laptop isn't a particularly exciting or impressive phrase, but much like annual prostate examination, oh. it's a necessary one. Most of us don't have five months worth of rent to blow on the flashiest, go fastiest laptops and notebooks on the market, and some of us just don't like the idea of spending a ton of cash on something while accidentally drowning coffee two minutes after the warranty expires. Unfortunately, if you're one of these people, you're not really left with all that many options, at least not many great options. It's even worse for PC gamers who want at least a semi-decent PC gaming experience on the go, as budget usually means integrated graphics. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying onboard GPUs are terrible or anything. Wait, no. That's exactly what I'm saying. Onboard GPUs suck! Unfortunately, the alternative isn't usually ideal either. Once you start looking at a laptop with anything better than integrated graphics, prices skyrocket, especially if you're interested in hardware that launched sometime this century. Even notebooks equipped with NVIDIA's budget powerhouse GTX 1050s are on the pricey side for a lot of us. But is all hope truly lost? Is there no fair compromise for the tight budget brethren? Perhaps not. But what? What's that peeking over the horizon with its decent price and not half bad specs? Huzzah! It's NVIDIA's MX150! Based on NVIDIA's Pascal architecture, the MX150 promises far superior performance over integrated graphics, four times superior to be exact, for tasks like video and photo editing, as well as smoother gaming. And thanks to the Optimus technology, you should get all of that without draining your battery faster than I drain my bank account, which, in case you're wondering, is really, really fast. Looking at the chip specs, it's clear that the MX150 is packing a lot more under the hood than you'd expect. Core and memory clock speeds are blisteringly fast for its price point. You get 2 gigs of GDDR5 memory, and it runs at a very impressive TDP of only 25 watts. Unfortunately, performance is hampered quite a bit by the chip's paltry 64-bit memory and 384 shaders, but that's kind of to be expected. You have to go budget somewhere. What wasn't expected was just how well this unassuming little chip performs, especially compared to its desktop counterpart, the GT1030. Running at stock speeds, the MX150 performs admirably at 1080p and even hovers around the 60fps mark in a number of games, after tweaking a few in-game settings of course. It also easily keeps up with the 1030 and scores much higher than it in a number of benchmarks thanks to its gratuitously high core clock. At the 720p resolution, the chip holds its own even more and should run most games at at least 30fps with decent settings. The chip's performance in synthetic benchmarks, while nothing to write home about, aren't bad either for what it is. Another area where the MX150 shines is overclocking. Yes, it can be overclocked, and yes, you should definitely do it if you don't mind the laptop's extra heat output around your crotch region. Although, honestly, it's not that bad. With the PL62 that I reviewed from MSI, the GPU barely peaked above 65 degrees Celsius, even when thrust into its overclocking potential. That 25 watt TDP from NVIDIA has done good. Overclocking the MX150 clearly adds a notable performance increase to both games and synthetic benchmarks. Games the chip had trouble running at 1080p with 30fps at stock were far more solid and others saw an increase of around 5 to 20fps depending on the game. Synthetic benchmarks also benefited remarkably from the performance boosts, with scores increasing to even more impressive heights. I get it. Even when overclocked, the MX150 doesn't come close to the performance of something like a GTX 1050. It won't run most new games with great or sometimes even medium settings at an acceptable frame rate. And that sucks! But what it does offer is a very playable experience that surpasses others in its class. It also sits at a price point that isn't oversaturated, making its home right between notebooks with integrated graphics and those sporting comparatively beefier GTX 1050s. Even if you were to look at NVIDIA's older Maxwell series offerings, the MX150 still comes out on top. The 940M with GDDR5 memory sports the same number of CUDA cores and memory bandwidth as the MX150, but with far less impressive core and memory clock speeds. Now let's not forget that it only has 1GB of lonely memory. In benchmarks I've seen elsewhere on the internet, the MX150 handedly beats the 940M, and even the 940MX with its 4GB of memory. 
Another contender for the MX150's crown is the 950M, and if you could find one at a reasonable price, you might be tempted to pick one up. But just keep in mind that it's been out for a while now, drivers have matured, and it won't be getting significantly better anytime soon, whereas the MX150 is still semi-fresh off the presses, and it already performs the same as, and sometimes better than the 950M. The GTX 960M might also be on your radar, and for good reason. It sports significantly more CUDA cores, memory, and memory bandwidth than the MX150, and outperforms it almost across the board. However, it comes with some major drawbacks, chief amongst those being higher TDP, and much higher price. The MX150 isn't the GPU we all dream of, but it's one most of us can afford, and it has performance in spades if you're looking for a smooth, albeit less pretty gaming experience. It also lives up to its claims of being much faster than integrated graphics and delivers everything it sets out to. Budget laptops have a new king, and I don't see the MX150 giving up the throne anytime soon, which it's about time too. It used to be that you could buy a PlayStation 4 Pro, a cheap laptop with no dedicated graphics, and have money left over and get a better gaming experience with remote play from the PlayStation to the rinky-dink laptop than what a low-end notebook section could offer you. It was a huge gap in the PC master race's supremacy. In order to be one of us in a portable, mobile, free-flowing environment, you had to have the cash to pony up. Spending over $1,000 to play The Witcher 3 on a laptop and actually enjoy it just really wasn't realistic for most of us. Thankfully, with NVIDIA's latest low-end card, you can pick up a laptop like MSI's PL62 with an 8-threaded processor for about $800. And hopefully, with KB Lake refresh mobile chips coming out in the near future, where you can get a quad-core 8-thread U-series mobile CPU on the cheap, that'll be a match made in PCMR heaven to give budget gamers a CPU and GPU that's actually worth having with a little bit of cash. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this video up there. What do you guys think of the new MX150 GPU from NVIDIA? Is it the budget card that you've been hoping for? How many of you will actually consider this GPU now that it's out? I'm keen to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. While you're down there, be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this review. Smash that subscribe button, not the like button, while you're down there to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the UF Disciple channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.